Hi everyone, Dan Gunner from Insane Forensics. Welcome back to Tech Talk Tuesday, where every week we try to give something to help your security program. And today what we're gonna dive into is how you can defend yourself when you're slow to patch. Maybe you're slow to patch because the system you need to patch has a reliability concern in it. Um, we see this a lot with industrial control systems and industrial networks to where the uptime and the reliability of the system can sometimes trump patching. Sometimes you have to patch in dedicated maintenance windows. Um, or you might be slow to patch just because of process. Maybe you know, your organization has a rigorous testing process of what it takes to validate a patch before you push it out. But for whatever reason, we're not going to focus on the why today. We're going to focus on how to defend yourself. Jumping right in, the context we're going to use today is vulnerabilities that CISA released last week. Um, these are impacting industrial control system vendors. Um, so three vulnerabilities, two with Rockwell Factory Talk, so that's a product within the industrial space. Um, within those products, there was an improper access control, a case where you know, a user that normally should have read-only permissions was actually able to execute. Um, there was also one for SQL injection. They didn't properly sanitize the input going into this system. Um, the third one was not related to Rockwell Factory Talk. It was related to another vendor. And again, you have kind of a data sanitization and handling issue with that. Um, but why this is a good background is, again, when you talk about industrial networks, you can't always immediately patch. So we're going to talk about what you can do instead. And specifically, we're going to focus on the two Rockwell vulnerabilities. So an obvious permanent fix is to actually upgrade your Rockwell Factory Talk beyond version 8.31. This will permanently fix it. And again, with the high win HRSS, again, the permanent fix is to bring it beyond this version. Um, however, as we said, these upgrades can't always be immediately done, right? Some items are only touched during certain maintenance windows or when you know the plan or the site actually decides to kind of have that window where they can safely have the outage. Sometimes they have to be tested, right? Will this patch actually be compatible maybe with other software um, on this box with whatever else is in the environment? And sometimes this might be due to external vendors. Maybe you have a vendor that does maintenance and you have to get them scheduled um, and maybe they have some of the other restrictions we talked about on testing. You know, Maybe they're only in the region of your given site to be able to do this at a given time. For whatever reason, sometimes you can't immediately go to the permanent fix. Um, you still need to aim for that permanent fix, but sometimes it can take you a little bit to get there. So knowing that a permanent fix isn't always immediately attainable, what we're going to do is we're going to take the two factory talk CVs and we're going to look at a permanent fix that gets us the level of security um, you know, without, without us having to do that full permanent fix. To do that, what we're going to do is look under the hood a bit to see where we might be able to plus up our monitoring, our situational awareness, to look for the meat of these vulnerabilities. Starting with factory talk, so the, the relevant points to this in factory talk, if we go to the factory talk manual, what we'll see is that factory talk mainly runs on server 2012 to server 2019. Where this helps us is now that we know we're in a Windows environment, so we might have Windows event logs, we might have Windows protocols to deal with. Um, likewise, when we begin to look down on software, we know the actual database is going to be SQL Server. So again, we're going to have SQL Server protocols, SQL Server logs, everything related to SQL Server could be at play. Also on software on here, we learned that, hey, Microsoft Office is li likely there. IE 11, this is probably .NET based. Where this level of detail again helps us get is knowing, okay, what technology components are at play that I'm monitoring, right? Um, and here, it's very, very, you know, Microsoft OS and software focused. So when we can immediately patch, we need to take that CV knowledge and develop a temporary plan that doesn't involve that patching, right? So this is where when you look at SQL Server, there's a protocol called Tabular Data Stream. Tabular Data Stream is the protocol that Microsoft SQL Server uses. Um, and the good news to know about this is Wireshark actually already has a TDS parser. So if you're using T Shark, if you're using you know Wireshark, the good thing is we can already see the queries and responses. 
This also allows us to see the function calls that are used. So we have some depth with this dissector to dig down into the traffic. Something I'm going to point to, if you want to get deep in this topic, a few years ago at a previous employer, I wrote a blog about threat hunting in TDS traffic. It's still a very good um, relevant source for that and the link's right there. So check that out definitely as you dig into TDS. So now, now that we know we're going to go with TDS, um, we have to identify some specific actions to watch. You know, when we take the kind of lines from the vulnerability report, you know, we have basically two lines that stand out for the SQL Server related um, CVE. One is user with read-only privileges executing SQL statements. And so what we can do with this one is say, okay, well, what are the normal users that interact with a given database, right? Um, once you identify kind of that group of users, you might then say, okay, we're going to look for new users that are communicating in. Um, and the other one that you'll look for and more relevant to this is which users should be read only. Because once you identify those users that should be read only, then you can look for in TDS traffic on the network or you can look on disk for users that are then trying to run those functions tied to execution. Again, because TDS is supported by Wireshark, we actually have the ability to dig into this traffic pretty well. Second bullet we pulled from that Voln report, right? The affected product lacks input validation, right? Um, and you're able to write to the backend database, right? A few ways you could approach this, right? You could look at what the normal queries are. In some networks, and particularly in industrial networks, sometimes you actually have a very small number of queries when you look on the network that happen on a regular basis. So again, looking for queries that might not happen that often might be one way of initially pulling ones out. Looking then for queries that have special characters or escape characters or you know, common characters tied to SQL injection vulnerabilities um, this is another thing you can look at as you're looking for those statements. On low traffic networks too, you can also look for, hey, what boxes or machines generally communicate TDS traffic and what users are they actually using to communicate um, you know, that traffic between, right? Are you seeing a user really only use between two assets? Well, if suddenly you see another user pop up on that box, and you know that shouldn't happen, that would be suspicious. Where this is also helpful is we can also go beyond network traffic. So we can go into our SQL Server logs, we can go into the Windows of logs, we can go into the application logs. All of this helps us give attain some level of monitoring you know, when we can immediately patch its data though for us to look at. So thanks for tuning in this week. This was a quick overview of what to do when you can't patch. Today, what we took was three CVEs that were released, three vulnerabilities released last week. Um, we looked at a scenario where you might not be able to immediately patch them. And we looked at what you can do in the interim as a temporary solution to protect yourself. So thanks for joining in this week. We hope to see you back next week.